Um, tell me who you both are and why are you here at Epilepsy Awareness Day? Uh, my name is Miguel Cervantes and I play Alexander Hamilton in Chicago in the Chicago production of Hamilton and this is my beautiful Hi, wife. Kelly Cervantes and uh, we are the parents of a beautiful little girl uh, named Adelaide who was diagnosed with infantile spasms at nine months. So um, that sort of flung us headfirst into the world of epilepsy and um, sort of taken that bull by the horns. And when he found out about Adelaide, um, when she had, uh, she was diagnosed with epilepsy, how do you feel at first? Uh, epilepsy came into our lives at the same time as Hamilton. We were having, I was in auditions for the show, and as well as uh, we were in a battery of tests with my daughter. So, you know, epilepsy is a word that you hear about, you know, until it becomes part of your life. It's just some sort of, it's kind of an unknown, you don't really understand what the details are. Um, so as we began to find out exactly what we were up against and the difficulties and the struggles that, that people with epilepsy have, yeah. um, you know, as a parent, any sickness, any time your child is sick, I think is devastating. And then to go into a doctor and, and talk to them about, um, well, how do we do? What do we do now? How, what are what are what are our options? And, and how is this going to turn out? And the doctor, all they can say is, we don't know. Um, it's it's a pretty terrible feeling uh, to have to uh, to struggle with and to come to grips with. Um, and I think that's where our journey began. Uh, as Hamilton is amazing, uh, this awesome, amazing thing that we're going to go to be part of, and our family was going to have this great opportunity to move to Chicago and be part of Hamilton at the exact same time our family was about to begin this unbelievably difficult journey with epilepsy and so you know these are the two things that we've been dealing with uh, simultaneously for the past two years. Kelly, how did you feel as a mother? Um, I was devastated. Uh, I was desperate. I, I, you these sorts of things happen to other people's children, they happen to other people's families. They don't happen to you or to your family or to your children. And so this sort of, just this, this wave of, of shock that this is, this is what was going to be happening. And we tried to, to keep hope. Miguel came up with this phrase where we called it our cone of possibility. And so we tried to keep hope. Yes, there, you know, you read all of the stories out there. Dr. Google can be a very evil, um, evil doctor. Um, but, you know, so you read the bad stories and you know that that, but, you know, we tried to remain hopeful that there were these other stories. There were these kids who still progressed. And unfortunately, in our case, that sort of cone of possibility has gotten smaller and smaller. And, and um, but I think that's, that's fueled our desperation even further and, and for me I I have I'm a doer I have to like take action and, and for Adelaide there just wasn't I felt so hopeless in terms of, of taking care of her and things that we could do for her I'm a control freak and I can't control seizures I couldn't and no one could and and so what, what was I gonna do I couldn't just sit there and, and let her seize and at, at the end of the day there it was very difficult for me to come to terms with the fact that there really isn't much that we can do for Adelaide. We do everything we can. We get her to the doctor's appointments, the therapies, we try this med, this diet, this. Um, but for me, what has helped is getting out there and getting the word out and being an advocate and, and doing the fundraising and raising awareness, letting people know that, that this is real, that it affects people's lives, that one in 26 will be affected. And, and no, it may not personally affect your family today, but it might tomorrow. And just that, having that voice and being able to share that message, that has helped me sort of maintain my grounding because it's very difficult to look at your daughter and, and hold her and tell her that it's going to be okay, but not tell her that she's never going to have a seizure again because I know she will tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that as a person with epilepsy as well. So, and, um, but it's, it's hard to, probably for, it's hard to, for her to understand why she's having seizures, because she's young. Um, and, but 
for you, because you mentioned the words uh, was community, um, and you started to, when you found out, to reach out to others as well. So how's the community of, of epilepsy helped you? Uh, the epilepsy community has, has been our backbone. I, I don't know that I we could have done this without the other families who have walked in our shoes, even if it's just having a simple understanding of what that is to, to hold your child while they're seizing and not being able to just, there's, there is this common understanding. There is this, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but when you are with another family who is walking and, you know, epilepsy has so many, it takes so many different forms, right? But to have a family that, you know, their child may not be the same as yours, but we're walking parallel paths. And that, just knowing that we're not alone, knowing that there are other people out there. And, and you know, I, I wouldn't wish what we have gone through on my worst enemy, but it is, you know, it, it's just that support, that help to know that we're, we're walking with other people. I, I can't even put into words how valuable that is. I, I say so much how grateful I am that we have social media. We live in a big city, so it's much easier for us to connect with people, but I often tell other moms who, who live in rural Georgia, go on Facebook, find a community there, because it does help, and we support each other. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the, 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 the community aspect is, is really important because um, as parents, we started out uh, big you both, I guess, felt isolated, and you get to that point, and I also, as a person with epilepsy, felt isolated when I first found out. So, a sense of community is really important, it's also um, healthy. So, how many, um, I guess, like how many neurologists have you seen, nurses, have they listened to you at all? Tell me about that. That's, you know, our, our, the, our journey with Dr. Kian in New Jersey, we saw Dr. Dare, and you know, the information that comes at you is pretty fast and curious, and then you, you sift through all of it on your own, um, and then they start throwing names of the medications at you as well, and so, uh, you know, I think that, our, that was our first experience, and then we had to move to Chicago uh, with Hamilton and then find a new doctor and find a new hospital and find a new a new face to start get, spouting other words at us and other medications and um, so all in told we've seen uh, four neurologists so five perhaps one uh, well no I guess Duke and uh, so now seven seven different neurologists throughout the, the course of our care and you realize very quickly in different styles of doctoring and different that um, uh, the, 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 very, the, very, the various forms of doctoring and very, various forms of neurology we can, can be right for you and also be wrong for you. And I think that's something that's very important that we've learned about um, the medical profession is that while you're going through all of these doctors, sometimes it's okay for you right. to choose. So one of our doctors left, and so we were forced to choose a new doctor. But I think you learn quickly that it's okay for you to choose a new doctor because of your own personal ideas and thoughts. Um, epilepsy is a, it's a very singular condition, meaning that every person is affected differently, and we are gonna know our daughter better than any doctor ever will. And so, um, uh, we have come to terms with the idea that we are we are as knowledgeable about her medical care as her doctor, yep. and so I think you know as far as medicines go and treatments and what is actually happening to her, it's okay for us to have a voice, have yes. an opinion, and 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 I think people need to know that about especially epilepsy and I mean you know, the medical field in general, but you know we know about epilepsy and and. and the conversation doesn't always have to be with any doctor. You're absolutely right. It can also be, what about this? How about this? And we think this. And I think um, always searching for the doctor that says, 
I can listen. I can under, I will listen to you, and I will, um, you know, work around what you think also is important. And I think, you know, our story is not unique at all as far as doctors and med medicines. You know, count. We don't have enough fingers for the medicines that we're we have tried and will try, mm -hmm. continue to try. Um, and and that is that is everyone's story. That's not our, it's, you know, that's your story. That's any person walking around here with epilepsy, that's their story also. And I don't think people know that. You know, I don't think enough people know how difficult it is yeah. um, going, you know, finding your way around this. So we've got to keep um, trying and find, trying, finding the right answers yeah. and the right people to, the right medics who will listen to you as well. Yeah. Because yeah. that's really important and that's a, a really good thing. So, Let's talk about Cure yes. and the fundraising that you do with Cure. Um, tell me about how you found Cure, first of all. Sure. So I, very sort of coincidentally, when we used to live in New York, I worked for a restaurant group where Cure had held an event. So I became familiar with the organization, working with them in my previous life prior to epilepsy. and. Uh, so I was aware of them. I knew nothing about epilepsy. I knew nothing about cure. But I was like, oh, those people were really nice to work with. And um, and that was that. Fast forward two years later, and I have a daughter with epilepsy. And we're moving to Chicago, where cure is headquartered. And I immediately start going through my proverbial Rolodex, looking for my cure contact to see if they can help at all and what recommendations they have and um and they were incredibly responsive and and so warm and connected us with other families who also lived in the area um susan axelrod who's the founder of cure visited us in the hospital because we adelaide was transported by ambulance one week after we arrived in chicago and she visited us um and it's just been you know, for, for us, at the end of the day, we are so passionate about the research side of epilepsy because we feel as if science needs to catch up to our daughter. Science needs to catch up to a lot of people here. Mm -hmm. We don't have the answers. The fact that, you know, 60% of people don't know why they're having seizures is unacceptable. The fact that 30% are uh, still are unresponsive to medications is unacceptable. And here is the largest organization out there raising the most money to fund basic research, trying to get these scientists and these neurologists out there, giving them the money that they need so that we can learn about this. Because I don't, I don't want to be involved with this organization and 20 years from now, I'm the Susan Axelrod going and visiting the baby in the hospital connected to a new EG. I, I want to know that, you know, the research has progressed and that we are finding those advances and, and finding the cures. But I don't, you know, another drug, another treatment is great, but it's not a cure. I want to know why this is happening and I want to stop it. And so hence. Yes. This. So coffee. Tell me yeah. about the coffee story. <laughs> we, uh, we, we, are, we made friends with uh, folks in Chicago and we were introduced to this guy, Michael Schultz, who owns Fairgrounds. And he has a couple of stores. He has a store in Chicago and then now Minneapolis and there's one in LA. And he's just a guy who owns a company that makes coffee and he said, I want to help. I'm a dad. I, I have kids. I have, I have children. And you have children and we need to help our children. And so he said, how do I help? And came up with this idea. He said, well, why don't we make uh, my shot at epilepsy is sort of you know a take on the Hamilton my shot um, concept uh, that we started a couple years ago, and so we thought that let's um, team up with him and he said we can make a coffee. We'll call it the my shot at, at, at epilepsy cure blend, it's Adelaide's blend, um, specifically for her, specifically for cure. We'll sell it at fairgrounds, sell, make um, make uh, bags to sell all over the country, anywhere we can, and a portion of the proceeds will go to. Um, uh, cure, and you ask why coffee, and I ask why not, because <laughs> you know there's something about fundraising that's you know it's, it's always you're asking people to you know, please help, please help, please help, please help. The cool thing about this is 
people drink coffee anyway. You know, so it's something you get up and you just do anyway. So why not have a little bit of good something come out of something that you do anyway? And so it was such a great idea that he had. You know, I, I, the words can't even express the thanks that we have for this guy, Michael, um, and the fairgrounds people for just coming up and be willing to be part of something like this. And hopefully, you know, people all over the world will start grinding up their coffee in the morning and want to start helping out people with epilepsy. I mean, it, it just it seems like it seems like such a great idea, and I uh, we're you know, unbelievably grateful. And the coffee's great; it tastes it's good. So good. It's not even just like a. <laughs> You know, like just at a charity. I mean, it's actually good coffee. So, so hopefully, it can, and especially this month in November, uh, we want to try to get as much of it out as we want to get people talking about the coffee. And, and then, you know, and about epilepsy as well. So we can do all at the same time to do it. Yeah, it's distributed by a national distributor. So there is absolutely no reason whatsoever that you can't ask your grocery store to carry it, that you can't, you know, ask it to be used in an ingredient in a, in a dish in your local restaurant or your local ice cream place or gelato. <laughs> Um, you know, so we're, we're trying to get as creative as we can getting it out there and, and all of the ways that we can try and get this into people's homes so that, um, so that they know about, about Adelaide because yeah. she's super that's, cute. That's our baby girl on the back there. Yeah. I mean, if that doesn't just melt your heart, I don't know what will. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, if people want to, uh, viewers want to find out more information, um, about Adelaide's Blends, about Cure, and um, also about this. Yeah. Am, yeah. I, am I doing it right? I think yeah. it's a left, left hand, <laughs> you know, you throw it up like this. There you go. Uh, yes. So that's my shot at epilepsy. My shot at epilepsy, yes. yeah. Okay. Uh, so Cure's website is cureepilepsy.org. You can also find information about Adelaide's Blend there. I believe it's cureepilepsy.org backslash Adelaide's Blend. Um, you can also come to my website, which is kellycervantes.com, and I have links to purchase Adelaide's Blend there. I also have a blog on my website, yep. and very soon, hopefully January, if we can keep Adelaide healthy, we keep, um, uh, we're going to be launching a podcast with Cure that I'm going to be hosting, and then also following Miguel and I on Instagram, we share a lot, or Twitter, or um, his fan page on Facebook, yep. um, trying to share as much as we can about our epilepsy journey as well as Adam's. And of course, the hashtag for my shot at Hashtag my shot at epilepsy will get you there too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, so thank you for talk talking to me. And uh, I hope that Adelaide um, gets better. Yeah. And Whatever that means, yeah. And survives to become, like me, an adult with idiopathic epilepsy. Um, and uh, so, I I just, just thank you for yeah. I mean, being advocates for for your well, lots of love for your daughter, but also advocates for others. And finally, I just want to touch on one thing. You're here at Epilepsy Awareness Day. Yep. This is your first time. Yes. It is. So, what do you think of it? What do you think? Oh of my goodness, it's amazing. Oh, I love walking around and meeting everybody. It's just been oh, what an incredible community. I, mean, I, I think that it goes back to what we were talking about before, where in a world where it seems like the walls are closing in and you know the epilepsy takes over your life you can step back for a minute and look around and just see how many people want to help how many people are trying to help how much help there is and how much support there is and for you know anyone who just needs a little bit of strength to yeah. look around a room like this and see how many people are there and it makes you feel a little less hopeless, you know, a little bit less hopeless, a little bit of hope can go a long way. And places like this, day at Disneyland, fills you with hope. And I think that's, that's, can't ask for anything else. It's magical. All right, thank you. Awesome, man. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Oh, please, no, hugs. We're gonna hug it out. <laughs> awesome, thanks buddy, appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thank thanks guys, you. appreciate it. Thank you.